I'm currently in this house right now. This is the house. This video is about how God gave me a house. This is not the first time and this might not be the last time where he steps in and blesses me supernaturally. Like when I get to that part, you guys are gonna be like, oh, okay. He just does that for people? God, God. what about, what about me? Because I say that, like I'll go through something like this and then a year down the line or two years or whenever I'm cornered again, I forget about it or I think for whatever reason he's not gonna come through. And it's like, I forget and it sucks when I forget. So that's why I like to, record them share them because then i can go back and watch this and i'm like yes girl get yourself together do you remember the last time you did that <laughs> hi everybody ah! i haven't been this excited to film a video in a really 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 long time like a really long time because i have been very sad if you guys watched my last video then you saw me be really vulnerable because a big part of me is I like to put on for people and every time I share a testimony I always have to disclaim that I don't want to pretend because I'm gonna be completely raw and honest that's hard because it's like you don't want to talk about how you couldn't pay your bills or you weren't ready to move or you didn't have money for something because you're a youtuber you're aspirational your goals what are you talking about but the truth is I don't make any money from YouTube I don't make any money from any social media platform all this is quite literally done just for God to be glorified and for me to share the testimonies so that you two can you know aspire and actually strive to do that like follow me as i follow christ that being said it's really hard to sit down and be open about struggles and hardships but no more i am choosing that i'm going to be fearless i have no reason to fear because perfect love casts out fear and i serve god and he is perfect love so why am i afraid i can literally tell you the things i struggle with because they're not permanent struggles because i serve jesus so there you have it. My name's Yodeline, Yodeline Light, Yodi Light, some people like to say. And welcome to my video. So let's start back to, I'll give you guys a brief history of how he's done this two other times. So this was the third time. And then we're gonna start back to the move and how I ended up having no money, no job, no savings in order to move when it came to July. The first time the Lord gave me a house was when I was 18. I'm 21 now. It was 2020. I was about to graduate high school rather. I was in a house where they did not believe in God the way I did. And they did not want me to go to church. They were trying to make me choose between church and COVID. And unfortunately, I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm not scared of some disease that the government made in order to trap people. I was like, God is greater than that. So yes, I'm gonna choose God over some disease and I'm gonna choose God over my family at any point. And I'm gonna choose God over all things because he says, if you wanna be my follower, you have to say goodbye to this, 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 and that. In 2020, I did that. I went and I lived with some people at church, but randomly when I was living with those people at church and I'm still going to church seeking him and being faithful, my job at the time, they said, hi, Yodeline, you were only a part-time worker with us, our only part-time worker, but we're gonna be paying everybody who was a full-time worker every single week until the virus is over. And I'm like, okay, that's great news for me, but they were not gonna do it for people who are part-time workers, but they told me you were so great at doing this. And so we want to hire you on fully when, when we do come back and we are gonna be paying you until this virus is over for the next few months. And they did that for almost the whole 2020. So that was how he supernaturally blessed me with money because that was not something I would be able to come into had I not been working at that place. And the Lord is the one who actually gave me that job. At that time I was saving money and I had gotten a studio dorm apartment with my sister. That was my first home. So I went from living with some girls from church who I got to see them be faithful and it made me want to be more faithful because they were in their 20s and I was only a teenager at the time, just graduated. I never saw people live for Jesus and seeing them live for Jesus made me want to live for Jesus. I shared that in my whole testimony of how I became a Christian as a teen. It's like 59 minutes long, but give it a watch. So going into that, I wanted to be more responsible. I wanted to seek the Lord on my own time. I wanted to seek first the kingdom of heaven and believe that all things would be added. I wanted to believe that going to church and being faithful to God, he would reward me. And not just because I'm going to get a reward, but because it says that seek first the kingdom and everything else will be added. Added. like he's genuinely gonna provide so that was my first experience and getting a house as a young person is really hard because it's like you have no credit no background no nothing like why should we give you a house I remember my sister she was living on her college campus at the time uh, they had these little apartments but they weren't a real apartment it was like a guy who rented out rooms like studio rooms. This major thing happened and that led to a girl having to leave. Right when I needed a place, some other person has to leave and he's like, hey, sure, you can come in. My sister and I ended up being roommates, but that only lasted a month because that happened May and one month later, my pastor said, God wants us to move. So now I'm like, God, you just gave me this house. You just, like, I just spent so much money, almost everything I had saved. I was like, okay, well you gave it to me so you can take it away and you can do whatever you want with it. So I gave it to him, right? Then I, 
moved to Georgia. So then that was my second place. So we were looking all around Georgia, driving, driving, driving. My pastor had went, he said, this is where we're going and it's in the Atlanta metro area. I'm not gonna be specific because people are creepy and will stalk you. And a few of the people from church and I, we were still living in Florida, but we road tripped to Georgia to see the city we'd be living in, check out what was available and it was COVID so no one was answering. And then we came across this one apartment. We found one person and he really liked me. He's like, you're so nice, you're so bubbly, you're so engaging. and and I told him how I was a Christian and we're supposed to be nice and he, and I, I'm pretty sure he was gay but he was very acceptive of me even though I told him I was a Christian and though I didn't tell him I agreed with him because of course I don't agree with homosexuality because I know it's a sin I still spoke with him as a person and not as some sinner and dirty worldly person and I think because of that he ended up following me on Instagram and following my messages and actually being interested in the Lord and seeds were planted so that happened and in that engagement I remember getting his number and him t like keeping up with him and then we got an apartment in that particular neighborhood right so that was the second place so then we lived in that apartment for one year and then we we're like okay so we need we're gonna move into a house because we're taking on one more roommate and that's my close friend Hadassah who you guys see in my vlogs all the time so anyway that house was again supernaturally because we were applying 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 and we that was our first time applying for a house. Getting an apartment is easier than getting a house, at least in my experience. We weren't getting approved. And finally, literally at the last moment, by the grace of God, this one place said, hey, you guys didn't get approved for any of the houses you applied for, but this is the budget we have for you guys. If you guys see a house on the market that meets that, then you can only get a house of that limit. But there was nothing. And then literally the week we were gonna be put out of our apartment, I hadn't even started packing because I was like, we're not going to get a house. There's no need for me to pack. And that was in my doubt because I'm like, worst case scenario, we'll just do it the natural way. I'm not thinking supernaturally or how God is a miraculous God and how he's been supporting me all along. For some reason, going back to that mindset, the lack of faith mindset makes me fearful. But it's like, why are you fearful? Don't you serve a God? who is love and who loves you and provides for you and can do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask or think? Why are you afraid? Why are you scared? Why do you think he's not gonna come through this time? He can come through and so he did. So literally last moment, that week, we were gonna be put out of the house. He literally gets us approved and they're like, hey, congratulations. Sorry, they're like, congratulations, here's your lease. You can move in on this date, July 13th. And so we moved in. So that was July 13th, 2021. We took some pictures and at this point I was 19. So 2021 to 2023, we stayed in that house and we were there for those two years. It was amazing. I learned a lot of lessons. I struggled a lot. I started a business or rather continued a business and made it official in that house. I quit the business because God told me to. I didn't know what to do. So I went back to regular work and that was one year later. So around July again, it seems like mid-year God is always doing something major in my life. So I was working in the regular workforce, not doing YouTube as a job, not influencing. But then I started thinking about, hmm, maybe I should do YouTube and stuff like that because at least I have more freedom and I can make money however much I want because that's what's marketed that's what the world is selling but the truth is part of the YouTube market is you're selling I suppose like parts of yourself in your life in your you're not for sale that's what the Lord was magnifying to me in simple words and so I was like I'm not for sale. I will not treat myself as though I am for sale. Anyway, that was not an option. So I really just have to work with my hands the way Paul says, like, I'm gonna work with my hands so that none of you can say you're the ones who give me money or that you're the ones providing for me because I don't need your money. I'm here to serve God and I'm here to live for him, not in a prideful, arrogant way. If anyone ever wants to donate to me, I actually don't ever post my stuff online because I find it a little awkward. It becomes March and I'm working at this job that I really love because I talked about in a video how I want to go into tech because I really liked the company I was working for but then I started getting a lot of harassment. The girls started bullying me at the job for being a Christian and they would whisper behind my back they were really mean and they were getting me in trouble with the bosses. I was in the HR's office way more times than I can count and I would cry in there because I can't help but tell the truth. I can't help but be vulnerable and be honest and tell her I'm like I'm a Christian. This job means nothing to me. If you tell me to walk out right now like I'm going to leave. The What they were proposing was that I conform to these mean girls and go down on their level and do things the way they're saying it even though it's against 
what I believe in against what God wants for me to do. I disagree, I refuse. And so then my job was threatened and they're pushing me and pushing me and trying to get me to quit. But eventually they saw, I'm not gonna quit, but I'm gonna keep doing my job. I'm gonna keep showing up, keep being kind, keep being the way God wants me to be, being Jesus in this workplace, even though everyone else is vicious and are trying to suck the life out of me. In April, I'm like crying in the bathroom at my job. I'm like, why am I crying at work? I should not be so discouraged and sad. It felt like high school all over, but it's cause it was a bunch of people in their 20s. I ended up getting fired because the girls cooked up a bunch of fake data of things I've done and they ended up finding out later that those things were lies but I was like I'm not coming back I'm sorry but it's just not the will of God for me to be there in conclusion that's how I ended up without a job one of the things the Lord has had me do in my short years of adulthood three years is being wise with my finances and using your funds wisely and of course tithing and doing all the things that you ought to do when it comes to finances so i had all of april all of may all of june and then july so the savings was not enough to last me all these months of all the responsibilities i had summertime came and of course i'm still looking for a job still praying for the lord to open a door and most importantly i'm freaking out because i need a house i don't have a house if i don't get a job or money some way somehow very quickly I'm I don't know what I'm gonna do and I don't like to be that person that drops the responsibility on my other roommates or on my sister because I know like she can help me or something I don't ever want to do that so I I've never by the mercies of God put anyone in that position and I don't ever want to of course so I'm seeking the Lord and trying to minister online and do the things that he wants me to do right because i'm still thinking of that scripture matthew 6 30 he's first the kingdom and all else will be added and god is uh faithful and if he clothed birds and the flowers why wouldn't he that do that for you like if he can provide for them he can provide for you the first thing that happened in order for me to get this house then was that i literally get this letter in the mail from the state of georgia how they are going to be assisting me financially this is really awkward to talk about but Again, it doesn't matter, I guess. The Lord was working through that, like, hey, humble yourself and let me do this. And so I accepted it and I was like, okay. And so they, I went to this workshop at the uh, department. They're like, yeah, we're gonna be supporting you weekly for this period of time until I was like, Jesus. So of course, at this point, I'm not able to save because I still have my current bills, but I also need to prepare for moving bills, which is thousands of dollars. And I've spent the money that I did have. So I only had enough for the month's rent when June came. So by the time July rolled around, I would only have enough for July's rent. So every time, if I were not moving, it would not be a big deal. I would have enough for the month's rent as well as my other responsibilities. But moving was what, like 1500 to two thousand dollars and i'm like, like jesus i don't have that money i do not have that money i know you provided for me to pay what i need right now but i don't have it for july and then he the thought came into my mind like tomorrow we'll worry about tomorrow today we'll worry about today isn't that what the scripture says isn't that what i'm always telling you and i'm like okay and my sister <laughs> who's not making this any better when july rolls up she's like yodi where is the money where is the money and she's not trying to pressure me but she's trying to help me understand the gravity like go do something to earn money and for me when i feel pressured i don't i'm not one of those people who's like gonna hurry up and just make hasty decisions like do something crazy but i was feeling really cornered and so i wanted to disobey god in my heart and that makes me really sad because all this time it's like he's providing and it's like why do you want to disobey god like has he not shown himself faithful that week i turned on youtube monetization back on and i felt so much conviction for doing that because i was not being obedient or faithful to what I know he does and who he is in my life instead I was trusting my own strength and my own power because I was worried and I was freaking out and I was like I can get money this way <sighs> god I don't want to cry but um not just that but I was feeling oh, I'm nervous. I feel like I'm always crying I'm not trying to cry guys it's just like Every time I say things that are just very true in areas of weaknesses, it makes me cry because it's like, oh God, that's true. That's what the word means when it says the truth sets you free. You really can't lie to yourself or lie to people around you or whatever because you need God to make you free and you need to be truthful with him. So anyway, not just worrying about like finances, but I was starting to despise um, my leadership and people in my life because it's like, you guys, why is the standard so high? I'm at church all the time, I'm being faithful, I'm worshiping all the time, but I'm worrying about next month because I don't have what I need right now. And you guys are saying I should not monetize because it is gonna be 
defiling the pureness of what God is trying to do with your channel and with the way he's ministering to, through you and you're saying that uh, I should not have any partnership with the world in any way with YouTube's uh, AdSense and with any anything any brands who want to do anything so I'm like but it would be so much easier and so I'm despising like my calling my actual calling of just ministering for the Lord just being pure before him the way the Levites had to do it like they didn't get to have land and do all these things the way all the other tribes they didn't get to have that they just had to serve unto the lord and believe that the lord would provide and i remember i went to bible study one night and i was really like i had a lot of pent up emotions and frustrations and like why do we have to listen to our leadership or what if you're obeying i think my question was what if you're obeying god but your heart doesn't agree and as everyone's answering the question i already kind of know the answer if you don't agree then it's going to lead you into disobeying him because if your heart's not in it then you're eventually going to turn away the other part of that is you can also repent and your heart can change towards what god wants and he can give you a heart of agreement because he gave saul a new heart i read that scripture for the first time when i first became saved that's the first thing that spoke to me how he took out his stony heart and gave him a heart of flesh so it's like yes god can change your heart you can change your mind and your perspective in a moment and you know what i did i got up i was screaming i was screaming i was screaming i was screaming like all the rage all the frustration all my heart of disagreement all the bitterness that i was feeling i was screaming about it because i needed to agree with god and i needed to get beyond my flesh and i did that by screaming by saying like jesus and I would shout that. I even could shout it right now, but my roommates are asleep, so I can't do that. But I was shouting that in Bible study. Others were getting free, others were screaming, others were shouting. And my pastor, Pastor Melanie, she's ministering and exhorting and going in. So it's Bible study when we're just talking and reading the Bible and answering questions and she's discussing, then it becomes full-blown exhortation and freedom and deliverance. And that's revival. So I've been talking about revival a lot on my channel since what, March, around this, the time I said this all started. And that's what's happening. It's like God gives the immediate power to change, immediate power for your heart of disagreement to agree with him. Because the truth is you don't want to agree with God in your heart. The truth is you want to be God yourself. I want to be God myself. I want to be in control. I want to be able to know how everything's gonna work out because I want to be in control but he's like no I'm God I'm in control when you surrender to me you surrender to my schedule and my order that's how it works and that's what you're submitting to that's what was happening and I got freed and I agreed and I was like yes I agree your will is perfect your timing is perfect everything about you is perfect I know nothing you are everything and I come under that and I submit to that so that happened my mindset towards God and how he actually can do what what he says he does his word actually is true matthew 6 33 is truer than we believe it's not just a scripture that everyone quotes and then just lives their regular life not trusting in him no it's seek first the kingdom of god and everything will be added seeking first god looks like a heart of agreement it looks like saying no to your flesh it looks like saying i will be disciplined i will wake up I will seek you, I will read your word, I will show up to worship, I will agree when my leadership says something. It looks like agreeing. When you seek first the kingdom of God, then now everything else, secondarily, all the things you need, the things that are just things, he can just give that to you. Because your heart, that you need to give to him, and then everything else he can give to you. So, yes, that's when literally 10 days left, it's like July 3rd or so, things just start falling into place. Randomly one day, one morning, I believe I just woke up and I, chose to check my phone for the company that we are currently leasing our home with and they only have four bedrooms and occasionally a five bedroom but they never have sixes or five with an extra space and that's what we're needing and I randomly look I look up five plus bedrooms put the zip code of what I need by faith just I just felt like hey give it a try and I did and when I tried it one house came up the one I'm in right now, so spoiler alert, that's what happens. But the only house, and I'm like, this house is beautiful. This light is beautiful in the house. It's flooding, there's so many windows. It's two stories. It was just it, right? Then we're like, okay, let's go tour this home. I sign up for the tour. We go and we tour the home. We're like, yes, this is it, this is it, this is it. And I just go on Marco Polo and I'm sitting to my sister showing her everywhere like, and then uh, you can hear her that's in the back. She's like, Charlie, look at your room. And so it was exciting because when she said that, it was like, yes, Jerlene, this is your room. Because I think I mentioned this earlier in the video, but Jerlene, she was in the garage until we needed to size up. That was the main reason we needed to leave our old house. And then, of course, something else that made me even more sure, the Lord whispered in my head, this is it. 
and do we like my sister sitting in the group chat house of praise group chat are we all on board do we all want this we're like yes 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 everyone says yes and then we all do our parts applications are stressful because they're long and you have a lot of reading lots of information to upload but we did it submit then bam literally we're calling hey guys have we been approved <laughs> we only have a few more days they did approve us before the lease was up like the weekend before and then we got a group of movers and if you follow my instagram follow it i was like moving highlights grateful for the brethren for helping us we literally had a whole moving team after even getting approved of course great you're approved but now give me the money and i'm like money now now's the time now jesus if you've been waiting till the last moment now's the time because now i need money <laughs> so what <laughs> i laugh because it, it's it's <laughs> I'm not crazy. This is the joy of the Lord because it's like, God, please. Next thing that happens is I am sending my sister the only bit I have. I told her, hey, look, I, I'm going to send you all the first month, uh, all the prorate for this house to pay that. Then the amount of things we're going to be at this new house, we have to pay that. Then the security, which is the whole month's rent, everyone has to pay that times three. <sighs> And then the actual rent, then the actual transfer fees of all the extra things, right? Okay, so I'm like, numbers are starting to just like, okay, how am I going to make this work <laughs> with this much money? But you need this much money. <laughs> so I'm like, Lord, do like the loaves and fish and make this money multiply. Because Yodi needs a miracle. So what happened next was I literally logged onto my bank account and I'm like, open, face scan, enter. I opened the bank account. Like, I kid you not, there's more money than I've had for all these past months. And I'm like, this is so weird. And I'm like trying to see where it came from. I had no idea. It just said, congratulations, rewards, la 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 la. And I'm like, okay, so I get rewards from my bank sometimes, but it's like $25 for having spent a certain amount over the course of several, several months. But basically it was just, bam, almost exactly the amount of money I needed. It says transfer to your account. I'm like, transfer to account? I'm like, oh my God, what is that? and so I was like is this is this a scam is this weird nothing has happened it was not a scam it's not weird it's very much like I honestly don't even know how to explain it to this moment except for like God saw it fit like didn't I t it's some numbers if I want your bank account to have extra digits I can do it like to, like that's nothing to me I want your heart I want your submission I want your agreement I want your trust I want your faith and I want your commitment to me I want you to seek me first I want to be first in your life, not a house, not money, not how your bills are going to get paid. I know that's flooding your thoughts right now because this is all that's in front of you because it's your livelihood, rightfully so, but me, me first. The hardest part is behind me. Then I just move in. I decorated my room. I'm worry free. I'm walking on clouds. The light is flooding in from those curtains because the golden hour is beautiful. So anyway, in conclusion, it's, it's just, god doing what god does doing things that make no sense to the human mind but of course it's like this is a natural thing but like it doesn't naturally make sense i couldn't explain to you and i could call the bankers and try to figure it out and try to make logical sense of this but i'm like why am i going to do that the scripture in hebrews 13 5 it says let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have for he has said i will never leave you nor forsake you and that was the truth he did not leave me. He did not forsake me. He just wanted me to be content with the things that I already had with how he was providing for me day after day, week after week. He didn't want me to worry about July. He was like, let July be July. Let June be June. Let May be May. Worry about today, today. It says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow worry about itself. That is the testimony of how I got this house. It was a great blessing and I'm really grateful that the Lord really does make all things work together for good, for my good even not having a job even not monetizing even having to humble myself and surrender everything to him businesses endeavors schooling scholarships all of it means nothing in heaven this earth is not my home heaven is my home all this is temporary places so even though i was pursuing him for a home and he did give me a temporary home on earth and it's one that i do love it's not my permanent home it's not our final place heaven is our final destination and we want to hear well done my good and faithful servant after all is said and done.